Good evening. Welcome to Newark's daily COVID-19 update, 5 o'clock. This is my, my makeshift mask, as you see, that I put together, my makeshift mask. Let you know that you can put together a mask if you want to. Be creative about it. Welcome again uh, to our COVID-19 update, daily update, uh, 5 o'clock every day. Monday through Friday and sometimes Saturday. Um, we'll wait till a couple of people get on. I want to read this article. I want to read part of an article for you. Got a full uh, day of information today. If you miss today, you're going to miss a lot of information. I want to read this article, or parts of an article from uh, National Geographic, uh, uh, just to, so you folks will know uh, what's going on and what we're doing. Uh, the, the, this, a little bit about the Spanish flu. Check it out my homemade mask. Let me go right to the article. I don't know if you're going to be able to see me. I'm trying to look, do this, read this article and see if you can see me at the same time. I hope that you can. Uh, if you can't, let me know so I can go, so I can come out of this. So this says, how some cities flattened the curve during the 1918 flu pandemic. Philadelphia detected its first case of a deadly fast spreading strain of influenza on September 17, 1918. The next day, in an attempt to halt the virus's spread, city officials launched a campaign against coughing, spitting, and sneezing in public. Yet 10 days later, despite the prospect of an epidemic at its doorstep, the city hosted a parade that 200,000 people attended. So here's what happened in Philadelphia. 748 deaths per 100,000 people after 24 weeks of the pandemic. Philly, Philadelphia waited eight days after their death rate began to take off before banning gatherings and closing schools. They endured the highest peak death rate of all the cities studied. That's 748 per 100,000. San Francisco had 673 deaths per 100,000. This is after 24 weeks. After relaxing social distancing measures, San Francisco faced a long second wave of deaths, a second wave of deaths that San Francisco faced. Uh, uh, and this is because, you know, you want to talk about what Trump is doing, talk about relaxing. They had a second wave of deaths in San Francisco, 673 deaths per 100,000 people. In New York City, they had 452 deaths per 100,000 people. So for each 100,000 people, 452 people actually died per 100,000. New York City began the quarantine measures very early. 11 days before the death rate peak spiked, the city had the lowest death rate on the eastern seaboard because they started quarantining early. St. Louis had 358 deaths per 100,000, right? Uh, and that's because they had strong social distancing measures, a low total death rate. The city successfully delayed its peak in deaths but faced a sharp increase later because they relaxed. Because they had low death rate earlier, they thought that they were in the clear. They relaxed their quarantine measures and had a second spike. That's why it's important not to listen to this president when he's telling people that we should come out of this soon. Uh, uh, we cannot come out of this too soon. Uh, you talking about the Spanish flu, which is probably uh, uh, before COVID-19, uh, the, the worst pandemic the world has seen. 1918. Uh, and, and if you go on looking at some of these places, Washington, D.C. had 608 deaths per 100,000. Newark, New Jersey had 533 deaths per 100,000. Newark, New Jersey, 533 deaths per 100,000. Somewhere between Philadelphia and New York, we began to uh, shelter in place a little after New York City, a little before Philadelphia. So we had the death rate between those two. It's important to go look at these articles. The article points out clearly, clearly uh, uh, what social distancing and quarantining does uh, for cities and how, how we keep ahead of this curve. So we're not just doing this for fun. This is a historical uh, uh, kind of uh, way to defend ourselves. Social distancing is not new. It is an old term, quarantining. And so it's important for me uh, to lay that out. You got to read the whole article. If you want to get the rest of the information, you got to read the whole article yourself. So I'm going to just go ahead with the numbers uh, today uh, for us. 
And Newark, 3,079 positive cases now. Newark has 3,079 positive cases. Yesterday we had 2,835. Today we have 3,079. Uh, we have 181 deaths. Yesterday we had 41 deaths. Excuse me. Yeah, 181 deaths. Yesterday we had 141 deaths. Uh, today we have 181 deaths. We pat, we're, we're going in the community, passing out uh, flyers with the zip code on it in your neighborhood, in your area, so people in your area, in your neighborhood who are not watching this can actually see what the numbers are in those zip codes where people live. Uh, uh, so look out for flyers that are being put out. Uh, tomorrow I'll read the zip codes again, but we're passing out the flyers so people in your neighborhood can actually see uh, uh, where they live at and what the what the actual total rate is uh, for that area. Please uh, uh, help us get that inf information out. Uh, today, we launched a website that you can go to. Uh, you can actually go to the City of Newark's website and then, then go to Newark COVID-19 Help. Newark COVID-19 Help. Go to the City of Newark's website. Then go to Newark COVID-19 Help. City of Newark's website, the Newark COVID-19 Help. You go there and it will give you a whole lot of information about things that the city is doing uh, around small businesses, uh, health tips, how to take a test, where to take tests at, uh, information about unemployment, all of those things exist there. Food distribution information, free meal information, all on there. Go to the city of Newark's website, COVID, Newark COVID-19 Help. Uh, go there. Uh, Newark Public Schools is continuing to give out food, breakfast and lunch to young people. Uh, it's about 16 sites uh, across the city. Go to the Newark Public Schools website so you can find out where you get breakfast and lunch for your children. Uh, we also uh, begun today uh, passing out those cards again. We started passing out cards uh, for folks to uh, get food. We passed out maybe 633 of those uh, 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 things today. I have it broken down. Yeah, 633 cards today. Uh, for food, uh, we gave out 206 in the East Ward, 106 in the Central Ward, 81 in the North Ward, 137 in the South Ward, and 83 in the West Ward, 83 in the West Ward cards. Uh, that number, you have to keep calling that number. I know it's busy. I know you're getting a headache from calling that number. People have been complaining about that number, uh, but you have to keep calling it uh, in order to, and the number is 973-733-5728. 973-733-5728. Uh, I know it's busy. Uh, keep calling. There are thousands of people calling that number. And that, and that, and that again, is for food. For food. That's for food. Uh, please make sure that you uh, call that number if you need it. Also today, uh, Invest Newark partnered with Audible.com, with Audible and Newark Venture Partners to assist Newark-based businesses in obtaining federal, state, and local COVID-19 funding. Free support will be offered to businesses, business owners on how to best access relief, funding amid related economic challenges. Newark small, small businesses will schedule 20 minute technical assistance sessions with representatives from Invest Newark, Audible and Newark Venture Partners, weekdays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. over the next 30 days. So 9 to 10, uh, 9 to 10 and 2 to 4.30 over the next 30 days Small businesses should reach out uh, to, uh, you know, Newark Venture Partners, uh, Invest Newark, Audible to get technical assistance. You have a 20-minute uh, technical assistance session about how to get money from uh, the state, the federal, and local funds that exist to help your business out. Please uh, do not uh, uh, miss out on that. You, you have to, if you're a small business, please immediately call that number, find out. I mean, uh, excuse me, go to that website, uh, www.investnewark.org, www.investnewark.org. Figure out how to become a part of that 20-minute session uh, that you should be able to get from 9 to 10 on weekdays and from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. over the next 30 days. Start calling tomorrow. Start calling tomorrow. Also, getting a lot of calls about the relief uh, a check that you should get. You should go to the IRS website. 
go to the IRS website, IRS website. It'll, it'll tell you very clearly on the front page of the website how to apply uh, for this money, how to make sure you're eligible for the money. Uh, even uh, for folks who did not fill out their um, uh, fill out their, 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 their forms in, in order to uh, pay their taxes, right? They didn't fill out their tax forms. So uh, even if you didn't fill out your tax forms, it shows you what to do in order to be able to get money. So go on there, whether you have social, whether you get social security, whether you get anything, go on there and uh, IRS website, IRS, Internal Revenue Service, go to their website. The front page of it will direct you specifically what to do uh, if you fit in those categories. And there's, there's extra money for children who fit in specific categories, $500 for children, more money for married couples. Please, uh, we're trying to get you as much money as you possibly can. And if you go to the website uh, that I talked to you about earlier, the City of Newark website, and go to uh, Newark COVID-19 Help, Newark COVID-19 Help, it'll give you some pointers uh, of how to engage that uh, as well. Before I get off of this, small businesses in the City of Newark, Newark Venture Partners, Audible, City of Newark, Invest Newark, coming together, right? Giving you 20-minute sessions 9 a.m. to 10, 10 a.m. and from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. on weekdays. You have to go there, pull 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 that information down, get get one of those sessions so they can teach you or guide you through what you need to do to, to access uh, revenue and money. Have a couple of other things. Uh, the WIC office. Been getting a lot of calls about the WIC office. The WIC office uh, is still working Monday through Friday by telephone. You have to call Monday through Friday. With the WIC office, if you didn't get your WIC check, if things didn't happen correctly for you, call 973-733-7604, 973-733-7604, or 973-733-8198, That's Monday through Friday on the phone. They'll be there in person on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays in person, Tuesdays and Thursdays in person. Call first. Call first, uh, get, get an appointment, go there Tuesdays and Thursdays to set up opportunity for you to go to WIC office if you need WIC. Um, I got I have a report on the county jails, and the people have been calling about the county jails. Listen, they, are, they have a private company testing the county jail now. Uh, uh, that, that means that more people are, are tested, which means probably more people uh, will be uh, found positive, and those numbers will increase. They're, they're, getting, they're, they're separating uh, inmates, uh, those from positive, those who are not positive, and they're also testing antibodies. That's something that we're not even doing out here, testing antibodies. So if you have antibodies for it as well, they can separate you. So they're separating the jail based on people who have it, people who don't, and people who have antibodies. They're doing the same thing for the guards uh, as well. They're, they're, they're in the process of testing everyone in the prison, uh, including the guards, so they can separate the, the population properly. And obviously, if you're sick, and you have symptoms and you're sick, you're supposed to go to the, to the doctor and, and preferably the hospital if you're that sick. But they're doing that. Keep, keep giving us the calls. We're going to keep uh, uh, finding out information for you, putting pressure on folks to get us the information. We want to thank the county executive uh, and, his, and his staff there for giving us that information on that call this morning. Uh, 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 Phil Elijah uh, for giving us information on that call. Uh, other state prisons, we have to reach out to the state and get information about what's happening there. Uh, remember, the WIC office is open. Uh, you have to call. You have to call. You, you, and if Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can actually go there. I know there are a lot of people that are complaining about unemployment. The state unemployment number has been busy. I've contacted and spoke to them. They, the, the, only, the relief they're saying is to call or keep calling, I guess, like our food line. Keep calling and calling and calling and calling until you get through. I'm going to try to get more information and better information on that tomorrow. I'm going to try to get more information and better information uh, on that for you tomorrow. Just want to, uh, we have been putting pressure on a lot of these senior buildings and a lot of these uh, long-term care facilities. I just want to give a, some good news, a special shout out to some of these buildings that have been doing a better job, probably better than most other buildings, and the buildings should learn from the work that these buildings are doing to keep their residents safe. Villa Victoria has been doing a, a, a better job at, at making sure that they clean the building and, and provide masks uh, for the residents. Branchbrook Manor, been doing a good job. 136 Tiffany Boulevard, 1 Court Street and 2 Nevada has stepped up to the plate and start 
uh, providing masks and cleaning the buildings the way they should. Uh, they're also going to stop people from coming in and out of those buildings. 15 Hill Street, starting to do a better job over there, 15 Hill Street. Uh, 195 West Market Street, that's the New Hope Senior Building. 195 West Market Street, St. Mary's Villa, and 1 South 8th Street. 1 South 8th Street is excellent. 1 South 8th Street, excellent. Listen, if you have people in those buildings, call, check up on them. If the mayor says something today and you think that that's wrong, it's contradictory to what, to what I just said, make sure I find out what's going on in those buildings. Don't get angry. Uh, do your job. Call over there. Call your, your parents, your grandparents. Find out what the issues are so we can go there and check uh, because this is based on a, a check we did yesterday and, and, and past couple of days. So tomorrow, the next day, today, things could get worse. Let me know what's going on. But right now, those buildings are exemplary. They're doing a great job. We just want to shout them out to make sure uh, uh, that they know uh, that they're doing a good job and, and they know that we know. Uh, I didn't get an opportunity to, to, to thank Anheuser-Busch. Uh, yesterday, I didn't get an opportunity uh, um, to, to thank them for uh, participating in, in, in our Monday lockdown. I appreciate that uh, as well. Tomorrow is Newark Census Day. Count our count. We're going to fill out the census together, all of us. Uh, check your social media pages for more information. There will be a selfie challenge on your timelines that are coming out. Remember, go to www.2020census.gov, www.2020census.gov. We're going to be doing a robocall. This is for the robocall. We're going to be doing text messaging. Uh, we're, going to make, we're going to have people calling your house because we need you to get the census done. Please, uh, don't, don't, don't fail us on that. We need you to get that census done. Don't fail us on that. Somebody text me, what's this on my neck? That's what it is. It's my mask for the day. So let you know you don't have to go to the store and get a mask for twenty dollars. Make something, be creative, put it on your face, go outside uh, with it on. Uh, I made sure I said all, all all of the things I needed to say. I gotta, I have to uh, talk to you about folks that test positive, right, for COVID, and there are some guidelines that you must follow that people are not following. So I have to make sure that you, in fact, follow these guidelines uh, because if you don't then uh, what's, what's happening is you'll be outside too early and uh, you'll reinfect people. And we want to make sure you don't do that. We want to make sure you do not reinfect people. So here's, here's some guidelines. Two, quarantine yourself at home. If you had close contact with a person who has lab confirmed COVID-19 or who was diagnosed with COVID-19 without lab testing, Self-quarantine, which means stay home. Stay home. It don't mean go anywhere else. It means stay home, right? And monitor your health for symptoms of COVID-19 for 14 days, 14 whole days after your last contact. It has to be 14 days after your last contact. So if you saw him yesterday, then you're 14 days after yesterday. If you see him today, then it's 14 days after today. You have to quarantine for 14 days, at least 14 days, right? If you are symptomatic, that means you have symptoms, shortness of breath, fever, right, coughing. If you, have, if you are symptomatic and confirmed initial tests and not going to repeat a follow-up test, right, meaning you went, to, you went to get a test and they told you you're positive, right, and you're not getting a test after that, here's what you have to do in order to be free and in the clear. Three days without fever and without medication. You have to be able to go three days without a fever and without medication. Two, you have to have improvement of your symptoms, meaning coughing, chest pains, uh, chills, body aches. There has to be a, a clear improvement of those uh, symptoms that you have, right? And at least seven days from initial onset of symptoms. So it, it seven days from when you started getting symptoms, seven days after that, right? You have to have three full clear days of no fever and no medication, right? A clear reduction in symptoms of coughing and everything else in order to be in the clear. If you're not, if you don't have those things, you're not in the clear. You're not in the clear. You have to have seven full days after you've had symptoms, three days without fever, and a clear improvement in your symptoms before you feel like you're in the clear, right? Uh, you, you, that must happen. Or you're going to reinfect somebody else. Here's, here's, a, here's, here's one uh, uh, that is people are, are need to listen to. If you are positive, 
and have no symptoms. The other stuff was people who had symptoms. If you're positive, that means you went to the doctor. They tested you. They probably tested you because you was around somebody who was tested positive. They tested you. You have COVID-19, but you have no symptoms, meaning you're asymptomatic. You don't have no fever. You feel good. You're healthy. You feel strong. Uh, it does not mean go outside. But here's what it is. You have to isolate yourself still. Still have to isolate yourself. Isolate yourself. You want to come out of isolation. To discontinue isolation, you have to have seven days have had passed since the day of your positive test. So if you tested positive on January the 1st, right? Seven days after January the 1st, right? January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th, January 5th, January 6th, January 7th, January 8th. On January the 8th, January the 8th, uh, you, you, if you still are asymptomatic, right, then, then you could be able to begin to go to the store but out and do all the other things. But you, I would, you need to go out with a mask on and gloves. A mask on and gloves, right? A mask on and and. Uh, limit your contact with other people in your family and other people around you. Listen to what I'm saying. If you went to the doctor and they tested you positive at the doctor, right? But you have no symptoms. You're not coughing. You don't have no chest pains, no fever, no 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 body aches. You don't feel weak. Uh, seven days after you got your positive test, right? Seven days, not seven days after you came from the doctor, seven days after you got a positive test, right? Seven days after you have a positive test. If you still have no symptoms, if you still feel okay, right? I would then begin to feel like you could start coming out of isolation. But wear a mask, wear gloves, and limit your contact. These are the CDC recommendations. These are not Mayor Baraka's recommendations for anybody that's asking or typing or trying to figure out if I'm a doctor. These are coming directly from the CDC, not me. You can go to the CDC's website, pull it up, and figure it out on your own. But I read that to you for people who ref who won't go to the CDC website to get that information on their own. Uh, that That's important for us because there are people who tested positive who believe now that they tested positive, that now they can go outside, they can, they can hold on to their children, they can do all kinds of things that they've normally been doing. Not true. You have to have at least seven days after you've tested positive to even feel like you can begin to be in the clear. And even then, you need to take precaution. Wear masks, wear gloves, stay away from people uh, as, as much as you possibly can. No contact, no close contact, no close contact. Now, I went over all of those things. If you need to find that, go to uh, the, the CDC website and, and pull that up uh, yourself. Just to reiterate a few things, IRS, go to the IRS website, pull down, uh, look at the first page. You'll see all of the things that you need all of the stuff that's available for you if you uh, are trying to find the, the stimulus check for yourself, how to qualify for it, how to fill out your income tax, all those specific things right on the IRS front page of the IRS website. You can go to the city of Newark's website, uh, go to COVID-19 help, uh, Newark COVID-19 help, and you can go to our uh, additional uh, link to a web page that will uh, show you a bunch of information about business, money for businesses, uh, unemployment stuff from the state, uh, uh, health tips, all the things that you need uh, as it concerns us here uh, in the city of Newark. Also told you to go to www.investnewark.org, pull down some information about the uh, the joint partnership they're doing with Audible, right, and Newark Venture Partners that will give businesses a 20-minute uh, kind of information session about how to draw money down from the state and the federal government so that you won't just sink. Your business will not sink uh, in this time. It's important for you to do that. I want to give my shout outs before I read my Angels of Bread poem. I told you I was going to read that poem. Uh, just want to shout out Shop Newark all the time. Love you. Keep pushing. Straight shot. Straight shots, Han. Thank you. 911 callers uh, are also uh, essential employees. People, when you call the police or fire or ambulance, those, somebody answering the phone, those people got to go to work. Five Butterball, thank you from DPW. Family over everything. DPW workers, shout y'all out. Keep you doing a good job out there, man. Stay at it. Stay at it and stay healthy. Wear your mask. Uh, Elizabeth Marti, thank you. Bird 96, getting those push-ups in. A Will Away sent me a, a, a great video, a great video talking about 
that how the CDC knew about the coronavirus uh, in December, in December, probably November. Uh, check, that's a great video. You should look at that. Uh, Taj Williams, thank you for the love. All Things Lewis, appreciate you. LCWR76, thank you for the prayers. Keep them coming. I need the prayers. Uh, Miss Sherry, thank you for the love and the respect. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you got over uh, the illness. You were a fighter. You're one of the ones that fought it. Uh, we're glad you, you're with us. We don't have those full numbers, but you represent the many, many, many Newarkers that fought this, this sickness, this illness. And yes, it's a disease, a dis-ease. It puts your body uh, 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 out of regular, normal behavior and activity. It's, it's a dis-ease. You're at dis-ease. Thank you for knocking that out for us. Uh, Newark Youth One Stop. Yo, all of those young people for sending me those things. Should the goat. Oh, man, that was dope. Little young Sari, I appreciate you, man. Uh, Daniela Palacios, uh, for all the things you should do while you're social distancing. Appreciate you. Crystal Smith, appreciate you, too. Uh, you guys are great, man. I appreciate the love. Uh, and I, I got to give you some good news. Here's the good news. The state of New Jersey did a kind of uh, a survey or kind of uh, a test to see which county was social distancing the most, which county was obeying the, the quarantine or the stay inside orders the most. Guess which county is number one? Essex County. And I bet you dollars the donuts that Essex County is doing well, uh, has a lot to do with us here in the city of Newark holding the line. Shout out to all of y'all who have been social distancing and staying themselves in the house. Thank you for that. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for that. Uh, gotta, gotta do this one. Angels of Bread, Martin the Spot. I'm going to read some of it. I ain't going to read the whole thing because it's pretty long. I want you to read it when you get a chance. Angels of Bread by, by, by Imagine the Angels of Bread by Martin the Spot. This is the year that squatters of Vic landlords gazing like admirals from the rail of the, of, of the road deck uh, or levitating hands in praise of steam in the shower. This is the year that shawled refugees deport judges who stare at the floor and their swollen feet as flies are stamped with their destination. This is the year that police revolvers stove hot blister the fingers of raging cops and nightsticks splinter in their palms. This is the year that dark-skinned men lynched a century ago returned to sip coffee quietly with the apologizing descendants of their executioners. This is the year that those who swim the borders undertow and shiver in boxcars are greeted with trumpets and drums at the first railroad crossing on the other side. This is the year that the hands pulling tomatoes from the vine uproot the deed to the earth that sprouts the vine. The hands canning tomatoes are named in the will that owns the bedlam of the cannery. This is the year that the eyes stinging from the poison that purifies toilets awaken at the last to see the sight of a rooster loud hillside, pilgrimage of immigrant birth, this is the year that cockroaches become extinct, that no doctor finds a roach embedded in the ear of an infant. This is a year that the food stamps of adolescent mothers are auctioned like gold bouillons, and no coin is given to buy machetes for the next bouquet of severed heads in coffee plantation country. This is the year, this is the year, this is Mr. Baraka's part, the mayor's part, this is the year that we survived the coronavirus, COVID-19, that we do everything we supposed to do. This is the year that we come out of this alive. Godspeed, y'all. God bless y'all. Love you.